Hi everybody, I'm Glenn and uh, today I'm going to show you a little tool that we have designed and made for the Arcturoid. Uh, we are the proud owners of the new Arcturoid. If you own one, I don't need to tell you how fantastic this machine is for cutting out of flat steel. However, uh, not always are you going to be cutting a part out of raw blank sheet metal. Sometimes you have an existing part like this particular piece here. It's just a six inch piece of tubing and I need a hole exactly in the center of this tubing. So in order to put the hole in the right place, we need to be able to reference something. So uh, most of you probably already know from doing the calibration of the tool that the face of the machine here is square to the X axis of the machine. So using a carpenter's square, I have just put the carpenter's square up against the face of the machine and squared up this piece of stock so that I'm right in line with both the X and Y axis of the machine. So now if I want to put a hole in the center, all I need to do is come over to the control and uh, enter the coordinates for the hole, which in this case, I've got a six inch piece. I'm going to have an X dimension of three inches and my part is 1.574 inches wide and half of that is 787. So I'll put a hole at X3, Y, 787. How do I know where those holes are? I need a zero, right? Well, that's where the corner wizard comes into play. So just like the calibration tool that came with the machine, you've got a little point right here and you've got a recess in the bottom of this tool. And if you set this tool, on the part that you're working with, this point represents the exact corner of this part. So if I just bring the head over here, line it up with the top, and I'm going to dial the head down until we're close, and I'm going to get that right into the center. It's locked in now, I'll just make sure. Okay, so I'm right there locked in. I'm going to zero the machine right there. I'm going to dial the head up out of the way. And now our reference point is this corner of the work. So I know that if I dial X3, Y787, I'll put a hole in the center of the work. So let me just come over to the control here. We're going to go into trace, make sure that there's nothing in here. We'll select a, a hole. And my lead is 125, that's fine. My diameter, yeah, let's leave it at 250. So the X position we decided was gonna be three. And the Y is 0.787. And I'm gonna go on the right side, so it's an inside cut. Everything looks good, I check out. And I'm going to save and exit. Okay, so now, if I come over to the machine, all right. First of all, I'm just going to show you that the part is almost exactly six inches, six and two thousandths, okay? And if I set the machine to dry run and run, it's coming over right to the middle of the part. Everything looks good to me, left, right, and looks like it would cut the circle just fine. So based on that, I'm going to go ahead and run. So I'm going to take the dry run off on the control, and here we go, run. Probing. And done. And there you can see that the hole has been created in exactly the center of the part. So that is how the corner wizard works for rectangular and square objects. And in some cases, we don't always have rectangular or square objects, and you might be worth working with a round object. Well, that creates a whole new problem. So if you've got something like this, a plate here with a five bolt hole pattern on it, and this inner diameter is a bit too small for what I need, so I want to open this up to two and a quarter inches in diameter, I need to find the center of this round and that also again is pretty tough to do over here so well not anymore uh believe it or not using this same corner wizard we're going to achieve just that so let me break down this setup set up for the round and i'll show you how that works too all right so we're back with another setup and this time you can see i'm still using the carpenter square i used a spacer in front of the machine here to the square which i've already removed to uh make sure that this is parallel with the face of the machine for for that uh direction and uh, squared it up here. And now I've taken a round piece and I'm setting it on the inside of the carpenter's square. And I know the diameter of this piece, which is just shy of six inches. And I know that this is two inches wide and this is one and a half inches wide. So now if I wanna to get to the center of this hole, if I use our uh, corner wizard and set that on the carpenter's square itself, if I get the corner of that square, then I have this edge and I have this edge at zero. So I would take half the diameter of this round add two inches and that's my x dimension half the diameter of the round again add one and a half inches and that's my y dimension so i'm going to go ahead and 
grab the corner of this part. I'm going to bring the torch on over. I will bring the head down. And as we get close, I'll bring it a little, a little closer to where it should be. Just about there. And down one or two more clicks. And we're in. Okay, so that's the exact corner. I'm going to zero the machine at the control. I'm going to dial the head up back out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead at the control and come over here. All right, so we're going to go to trace, hole, enter. And this time our diameter we want to be 2.25. And our X we have calculated to be 4.992. And the Y should now be a minus 4.992. 492 and we're going to do an inside cut again we're going to say okay that looks good we're going to save okay and exit now we show our hole in that position there and our zero zero you can see on the screen there so we bring you back over and as always before cutting we will do a quick dry run so I'll shut off the torch I'm going to run and as you can see it's coming right down in the middle of the part. Now this is the edge of where the hole would be and where it would start. So it's going to come out and it's going to follow the diameter of the existing hole but we're enlarging it to two and a quarter inches and as you can see it's following it just perfectly. So this again is why we call it the corner wizard because it's not good just for rectangles and squares but even round objects as well.